Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for a very high energy video. Why you may ask? Because yesterday, the Gotham Knights, our team in the Pro Chess League, delivered a historic victory in emphatic fashion. One of the greatest victories in the history of the entire Pro Chess League. That will be the subject of today's video. I have a very small favor to ask from you. Give me about 30 seconds of your time. First of all, I've been nominated for Chess Streamer of the Year 2022, the streamerawards.com. I'm flying to Los Angeles, six and a half hour flight. I would really, 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 really love to win this award. I'll put the link in the description. Just vote for me if you like my content, please. Thank you. Also, when the Gotham Knights win in the Pro Chess League, we give away courses. Go to my courses website. Hit sign up. Just make an account. That is literally the only requirement to enter. We will be giving away 50 courses, five, zero. All you gotta do is have an account. And if you have an account, you get free samples of all of my courses. That is, it takes you five seconds. We're gonna be giving away 50 winners to celebrate today's victory. Oh, and one more reminder, in case you didn't know, we got merch. Support the team, GothamMerch.com. Link is in the description. Now let's go. Now, Magnus Carlsen is involved in today's video because I want to give you an update of his team, the Canada Chess Bras, as well. Magnus's team was going up against the Garden State Passers, and in the final round, uh, Magnus played the French defense against Sam Sevian, that is Kanavitz. Uh, I don't know why that's his username, but it was a very, very tense opening, and Magnus went on a big aggressive opening of the position with pawn takes d4 he traded knights he traded bishops with Sevian, and he put his knight very comfortably on the e4 square now Sevian had a nice position early he played c3 and a5 and it looked like things were going swimmingly he could have played queen h6 and just started maybe going for it with rook f3 obviously got to stop knight f2 but the position looked really really dangerous bishop takes b5 uh, is what Sam went for in this game. And uh, Magnus immediately started creating counterplay. For a very brief moment, there was a chance there that White would have been up two pawns, but White went uh, wrong a little bit here. Magnus got in on the queen side, and suddenly, uh, it didn't seem like there might have been as much of an attack. Sam kept poking, but look at this. The brick wall of pawns built by Magnus Carlsen. Sam sacrificing a, uh, a knight and trying to get in, but it ain't enough. Queen d4, break, centralizing the queen and winning the pawn. And it was Magnus leading his Canada chess bras to a close eight and a half, seven and a half victory over the Garden State Passers. Magnus once again goes four and oh. So Magnus is just obliterating, all right? He has like multiple matches of being perfect. And who is the only other player? Who is the only other player in the entire league who can even compare to when Magnus is on? It's Hikaru. Now, remember, the average rating of the four players in the Pro Chess League has to be 2550. There are little things like if you're above 2700, you just count as a 2700. If you're below 2200, you count as a 2200. They've done this in specific ways so that every team has a woman. It's, uh, every team has to have minimum one female player. And the average rating has to be 2550 as of November 2022. So we fielded Hikaru, Vladimir Fedoseev, international master and soon to be grandmaster Alina Kashlinskaya, and Mikola Bortnik, also very strong international master. And he's uh, 3000 rated online. And folks, Hikaru early was playing the board four of China, aka the Shanghai Tigers. This is uh, Yiping Luo. Uh, and. Uh, you know, from the early going, it's difficult to get a bad position when you play white and when you have a lot of time on the clock. And so Hikaru, what he did is he opened up his opponent's king and he won a pawn. But, uh, sorry, he, he, he sacrificed the pawn to open up his opponent's king and he got the following position like this. Balanced. Pretty balanced game. You know, white brings the king out and queen like this. One in accuracy. Rook c8. Rook to c8. And the board four is going to have some questions to answer here on this c4 pawn. Rook takes c4, take, take. And it was light squared pawns to counteract the dark squared bishop that can't touch anything. Bishop down to d2. White tried his best, but Hikaru just came forward like a buzzsaw, like the hydraulic press 
that doesn't stop and he just kept moving he got it down to a one rook end game he's gonna win the b4 pawn he doesn't even need to win it he's gonna push his d pawn forward and here comes the king and hikaru getting it done in clinical style here to open up the scoring the first round against china was close it was two to two the top boards won the the bottom boards lost it was very very close uh, in the early stages, and um, Hikaru just kept just just kept firing away. I mean, you put him up against actor Shu. Actor Shu is Zhu Yi. He's like a twenty-something-year-old grandmaster, and he is a beast. He is a very very solid player. He's drawn a lot of twenty-seven hundred feet a guys. So how does Hikaru beat a guy that doesn't lose? Who plays the Petrov, right? This guy has a very solid repertoire. Well, Hikaru puts the knight on d3, which is a very non-traditional way of retreating in the Petrov. And then he plays queen e2 and knight f4. And essentially the idea is like, look, we can trade queens, but I have more development. So obviously I'm going to be a little bit better. So let's see how Hikaru shows the level difference between a young 2500 rated Grandmaster and one of the best blitz and uh, bullet and rapid players in the world, as well as a multiple time uh, candidates participant. And that is of course Hikaru. So black plays this move H5 and Hikaru plays it in a way where he goes long. He castles long and his opponent does too. Why is white so much better here? Can Hikaru show us? I don't understand. Why does white have such a massive advantage? What, what, what is, what is happening here, right? Bishop d3, take, take, this. That's the problem. The problem is that the black king is exceptionally weak. And you've got all these pieces that are going to go over there somehow. b3, b4. I meant to highlight b3. I, I know my squares, I promise. You also have rook e1. You also can put a queen in front of a bishop, put the bishop back there, and go give... Oh my god, what is wrong with me? There we go. Can't draw arrows at all. Hikaru plays h4. Why does he play h4? Because now there's nobody that's going to go to g5. So black tries to trade off dark squared bishops. Hikaru's like, nope. How does black stop this and that? I got news for you. He can't. He can't. He has to make massive concessions. Like give away the bishop for the knight. And then go here, and then go here. So, at any moment, Hikaru might play this move. He doesn't have to do it right away. That knight is being controlled by one pawn. The rook is dominant. Nobody even cares that Hikaru's king is in the center of the board after bishop takes d2. King takes d2 is such a disrespectful move. King takes d2 is ridiculous. He took with the king. He could have taken with the queen or with the rook. It actually would have been the same. King Bro, this dude really played king takes d2. And then he played b3, and then he went here, and then he went here, and then he went here, and then he went in. And then he just took, and watch as white's king goes for a jog for- He doesn't go backward. Look at the time. Can anybody look at the time, please? It's 7 minutes and 20 seconds versus 6 seconds. Can I go back 10 moves? Look at the time when h4 was played. 6 to 8. Hikaru not only defeated a man that doesn't lose in emphatic style, showing the level difference, right? That's what you need from your board one. Hikaru won this game with force made on the board and seven extra minutes. Hikaru spent about three minutes on this entire game as black literally cannot prevent rook b8. If he moves his knight, he cannot prevent rook a7. Look at this. Look, look, look at this. Crazy. No, I mean, Hikaru was just, just unreal. Buy the merch. Support your Gotham Knights. Seriously, we might be a championship contender. Crazy stuff. All right? But folks, when I tell you it was not just Hikaru, I mean that. Our board three, very, very close board three, four. Uh, our new player, Alina Kashlinska, she's, uh, she's definitely going to be a grandmaster. I don't know if she has all her norms, but she's like 2495. Uh, I think that's like her FIDE. It's, I mean, she's a very, very high rated player. Um, there was a round that she was beating Wei Yi. She was beating the highest rated player on the Chinese team and like overall the number three ranked player that, that is in China. He's like 2700 FIDE. 
He ended up swindling her. It was a it was a very very close and tough game, very hard fought game. So Alina Kashlinskaya plays against Yiping Luo, right? He's the uh, he's the uh, the board four, and she plays a Grunfeld, right? And watch what she does in this game. She plays H four. She's a very very aggressive player. Her opponent, I couldn't understand if Queen H five was a mouse slip, but she just went here, and then she went here because her king is actually completely safe. And her opponent offered a dark squared bishop exchange, which visually looks really good, right? It, it looks very smart to have boom, boom, boom. And as you can see, the computer didn't like white trading, okay? It didn't like the fact that white actually made this trade. It thought white had better options, okay? Now, in this position, Alina Kashlinska played the move h5, okay? Played the move h5, <laughs> trying to go for a big attack. The computer says that black should take this, which just seems completely deranged. The computer's like, yeah, just take. I mean, who cares if you have doubled H pawns and an open king? It's, it, you, yeah, it's fine. Now, he played this move, which I found much more human. She took. And from this position forward, she played like the Terminator. She played like she was an evil villain in a movie. Or is he the protagonist? I don't even remember. Uh, and she was coming to, you know, to hunt down the opponent. Alina played bishop d5, which is a move that has two reasons. Number one, you block the rook from seeing your pawn, so that pawn is not hanging. But number two is that if black goes there, you go here and here. You actually want to trade. Why? Two reasons again. It stops the pressure off of your pawn, and you damage your opponent's structure, and kind of this bishop is stuck behind enemy lines. That is the idea behind bishop d5. He went knight b4 attacking her bishop, she moved, and then she targeted his knight and sent it backwards and went queen to g5, making sure that the rook, uh, that the knight cannot take the pawn because it would stop defending the rook. And from this position, she did one of the most disgusting things I think I've seen in a chess game in a while. She played the movie five. What's so disgusting about the movie five, you might say? This. Her idea is literally to come here and then to come here and then to come here to trade queens and black's king cannot stop getting mated. Her idea with e5 is she shuts the door, she's gonna go here and here, and here, and I got news for you. I've got news for you. Black can't stop this plan. There is literally nothing that black can do in this position to stop this plan. This plan is unstoppable. You know it's coming. You know exactly what your opponent is going to play. Rook h4, rook h1, queen f6, and there is nothing you can do. He went here, she went here, and he realized, wait a minute, I literally can't do anything. So what did he do? Spent four minutes, Took on d4, tried to do his best, but knight takes d4, rook h1, and a clinical conversion as she gets in, queen h6, and boom. Mate, if you take, I go here, and I'm gonna take everything. Knight takes e6, Alina Kashlinska wins a monster game in her matchup against Yiping Luo, and folks, it was more of the same. Big fish. Big Fish, that is not a fitting username for Mr. Big Fish. He is not a fish at all. Vladimir Fedoseyev, 2668 classical, but 2750. Rapid over the board chess, playing against Wei Yi. Wei Yi, he plays a semi-slav. Position is balanced, it's complicated. Wei Yi gets really aggressive. Opposite side castling, and from the early opening, it looked like, you know, Wei Yi's got a little thing going on, Rook G1. Looking like he's gonna play a little G4, G5. Take the fight to Fedoseyev, you know what I mean? Knight e4, though. Take, take. And now you go knight e5. All right, we trade. I'm going to try to kick you out. Like a very difficult position here for black to play because he doesn't have a lot of pawn mobility, but he plays f6. He's like, I'm just going to stand up to you. What are you going to do to me? You ain't got nothing. Knight g5, knight bank to f7. Way he captures, but it looks like suddenly Fedoseyev's figuring things out. He doesn't have a lot of pawn mobility on the queen side, but he has a nice situation in the center of the board. And in the future, he could consider bre breaking in with b3. 
Knight b6 played, rook a7, and Fedoseyev just very calmly takes a pawn. So what are you going to do? I'm taking a pawn. What are you going to do? You're going to attack me? Come attack me. Let's go. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Way he plays rook e1, looking to uh, get in on the, uh, on the e file. Rook e7, g3, trying to deflect the queen away from the defense of the rook. And Fedoseyev just goes here. We have queen d3, and queen takes pawn. Wei Yi just down two pawns, has had enough, resigns the game. Fedosei of our board two went 3-0. and He beat everybody, everybody they put in front of him. He went 3-0. and You might say, aren't there four games? You might say, aren't there four games in the Pro Chess League? Doesn't every player in the Pro Chess League play four games? And I would tell you, just hold on a second. Because Mikola Bortnik was also unstoppable. Mikola Bortnik played this game against Ju and Jun. This was one of the most insane games of chess I've ever seen. It was a Catalan. It was an insane Catalan. It opened up early as the E-pawn walked into the black position. He played King F8. He's up a piece. Ju and Jun played the move D5 and lost a piece, but opened up the black king. And in this position, when all hope seemed lost, it looks like the black king is getting mated. This man, Mikola Bortnik, with pressure everywhere, bishop e6, rook here, he plays the only move. In this position, black is completely lost, unless black plays the top engine move, queen a6. The idea of queen to a6, excuse me, I have a, I don't know what's going on, but I can't seem to, oh, there we go, there was a little glitch on my end. The move queen a6 sacrifices the knight to put a rook on the d file to take back and Mikola, in one of the more completely ridiculous games of chess that I have seen in a long while, sacrifices a piece. Well, I mean, sacrifices the safety of his king. Forces Ju Jun to sacrifice a piece. And she has to go for this completely nuts attack. Just total pandemonium on the chessboard. And bishop e6 check, f3, and he just closes the door on the white position. And when the dust settles, folks, black has an extra knight. Black is under some pressure. But watch as Mikola walks his king. King d8. King c8. And now he says what? That's it? That was the attack? Terrific. My turn. Queen c6. Rook e8, rook b8, both rooks in the game, knight c5, queen b5, rook e2! Winning! Game over! Mikola Bordnik! From the top rope! Every player contributed, and the team, we rounded all the way back. Who's the big man? It's really nice when your team is led by a Magnus or a Hikaru. Because when you look at games that these guys play, just the same way Magnus has been scoring four points every single week for the Bras, Hikaru has been unstoppable. He plays a Bogo Indian against Ju and Jun. She had to play Mikola and then Hikaru. I mean, the Pro Chess League is tough. And, you know, from an early opening, he got this very imbalanced and interesting position where he has a bunch of pawns on dark squares. It was a very equal game. But look at his dark squared blockade against white's light squared blockade, right? He plays f5, activates his bishop. Rook f8, just beautiful stuff, honestly. Like, a symphony of pieces. Look how much time he spent to play, like, 20-something moves. And Ju and Jun was doing all right. Hikaru was just trying to ask questions of the position. She played knight e4. It was an equalage game. He had a four minute time advantage. He had a little bit of pressure. He was definitely slightly better and he was gonna try to you know, put a lot of pressure on these weaknesses. His knight is just bulletproof. His queen is gonna come in. He's gonna try to play g5. She went here. And that allows rook f3. And even though she's gonna get two rooks for the queen, anytime somebody asks you what's better, two rooks or a queen, it depends on the position. And in this position, not only is this pawn falling, that knight is coming right back to c5, and there is just nothing that black 
uh, that will stop Black from winning this pawn, winning any of these pawns, and promoting the lot of them. And Hikaru just marches into the white position as if he has rent to collect with his king and his queen. And Ju Wenjun resigned because she's not going to be able to stop queen a4. She's not going to be able to stop the pawns. And ladies and gentlemen, the Gotham Knights of the Pro Chess League defeated the Shanghai Tigers. I keep wanting to call them the Shanghai Sharks. As my friend pointed out, I think that's their basketball team in the Chinese Basketball Association. We defeated the Shanghai Tigers by a score of 9-3. to three. Hikaru, 3. Fedoseev, 3. Mikola Bortnik, 2 out of 3. As the board, 4. And Alina Kashlinska with 1 out of 3. But I don't give about, I don't care about no 1 out of 3. That doesn't mean she underperformed. She was beating Wei Yi. Crazy. We won 9-3. They didn't even have to make us play a fourth game because even if they won four games, it would have been 9-7. 9-3 is the biggest victory of the entire Pro Chess League campaign this season and maybe ever, especially against a team like China. I was worried about their team. They have Wei Yi, Ju and Jun. They have two other 2,500 rated grandmasters. They are one of the only teams in the league that shows up every week with four GMs. We fielded two GMs. Two IMs, but I got news for you. Our IMs deserve honorary GM titles for the way that they competed in this match. The Gotham Knights qualify to the playoffs. Any team that wins three matches qualifies to the playoffs. We won three out of three. The Indian Yogis are there with us. We're probably going to be the two seed entering the playoffs. I think that's already determined. So when there's eight teams in the quarterfinals, the Gotham Knights are going to probably play the seventh seed. We've already uh, locked up a minimum of $7,500 just for making it to the quarterfinals as a team that will be paid out to the players. Uh, but uh, also, we're not going to stop at no quarterfinal. This is a juggernaut. This is an insane squad of players. We just fielded the death lineup. And I'm not sure we're ever going to stop. Shout out to Hikaru for being just a beast, winning like 10 games in a row at this point. Magnus holding down his team. And we're going to see which other teams make the playoffs uh, in the next couple of weeks. Folks... We won the match. That means we are doing 50 cores giveaways. 50, 5-0. I'm going to pick 50 winners. All y'all got to do is have a Chesley account. That's it. Go sign up for absolutely free. If you already have one, we'll let you know if you win. Support the team, GothamMerge.com. And please, I'm flying to the other side of the country. I really would like to win this. Give your mans a vote. Give them a vote. Or vote for whoever. It's democracy, but I would really appreciate your vote. Now get out of here. Gotham Knights OP.